towards resting. Okay, so that's resting again. That right there is called repolarize, repolarization. Repolarize is coming back toward the resting after a change has occurred. What's that called? We get more negative, that's called hyperpolarize. And when we return back towards resting again, that too is repolarization. So after a change has occurred, if memory potential returns back to normal, I don't want to say normal, to resting, that's repolarization. Depolarization, more positive. Hyperpolarization, more negative. Repolarization, return to resting. Doesn't matter if it was more positive to begin with or more negative, it's still repolarization. So, given these definitions, that's depolarization, that's repolarization, because it's going back towards resting. All right? There's your action potential. And we're going to go through exactly how it happens, by the way. All right? So I just kind of gave you the punchline. I'm going to give you the story now. All right? We have to reach threshold, by the way. If you don't reach threshold, that doesn't happen. If you don't reach threshold, it would just return. It would look like this. That's what it would look like. It would depolarize and then repolarize if you don't reach threshold. It's all or none. You don't have little baby action potentials. They either happen or they don't. It's like a, a, a light switch. You pull the light switch up, you pull the light switch up, and the lights all turn on, the lights all turn on, and then boom, you hit that magical spot, and then boom, the lights turn on. It's the same thing here. Okay, we're flipping the switch. Hit threshold, we just flip that switch. The light comes on. The action potential happens. That's what threshold is, and it's always more positive than resting, always. Okay, each cell has its own little threshold. Okay, are we good? That's any notes. So threshold, a depolarized membrane potential that must be reached to elicit pause an action potential, all or none. If threshold is not met, it doesn't happen. If threshold is met, it happens. End of story. Okay? Are we good? Yes? What on earth is so important about action potentials, by the way? It's just a few things. Right there. You have thoughts because of action potentials. I can do this because of action potential. I can't do this. Action potentials are occurring in my brain. I have a thought in my brain. I want to do this. Those thoughts are action potentials. Every thought that you have in your head is an action potential being generated in a certain way. Those action potentials, you guys know this, right? You guys did the pathways with Siebert. You know how muscles are activated by action potentials. You know the traps that occur, right? You have your motor neurons in your brain. You have your motor neurons in the lower part of your uh, 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 nervous system moving my fingers, okay? It's muscles in my hand, right? My forearm, which are in the thoracic region, correct, of your spinal cord. You guys know this? Do you know this? <laughs> you will know this if you don't. Anyway, those signals are getting to the muscles of my hand and forearm by action potentials. They're traveling down the nerves. Again, thoughts are action potentials. You like chocolate ice cream because of action potentials. You think that boy is cute or that girl is attractive because of action potentials. You can move your muscles, you release hormone because of action potentials. If action potentials stop happening, you cease to exist. That's just the way it is. Now everybody's going to be doing this. I'm the other kind of part. Okay? Somebody gets into a car accident and has major head trauma, and they say that that person no longer has any brain activity. What do you think they're measuring? Action potentials. What do they say that that person is now? Brain dead. A vegetable. Because of no action potentials. They have to put that person on life support. Why? because their brain, that's not generating action potentials, cannot control their heart, cannot control their breathing. They can't breathe on their own anymore. They need a machine to do it. They can't make blood flow in their body anymore. They need a machine to do it. Why? Because they don't have the action potentials that they normally do. You 
are action potentials. I made somebody cry years ago when I said that. She came up to me after class, Dr. Tucci, I don't want to just be in action potentials. <laughs> I swear that was those stats were her words. I had no idea what to say. I really didn't. I said, I, I, I apologize. I said, I'm sorry. I said, maybe there's some metaphysical thing about it. You talk to a philosophy professor about it. But for me, I'm a physiologist. That's just what you are. We know that because when they don't happen, you aren't who you are anymore. When you have a spinal cord injury, why can't you move your limbs anymore? You can't get the action potentials to your muscles. Why? Because you've severed your spinal cord. It's action potentials. Okay? That's how important these things are, and we need to know how they work. Okay? You go to the dentist and you get, I don't know, a tooth pulled, they shoot you with Novocaine, you don't, then you get punched in the face and it doesn't hurt. Why don't you feel anything anymore? Because they stop the action potentials from occurring. Okay, I'll tell you how a little bit later. I'm actually going to talk about lidocaine, but you know, you those kind of anesthetics and how they work. In essence, they stop action potentials. Okay? So, let's talk about how the action potential actually works, the dynamics of the action potential. Let's talk about it. All right, so we have all these words here. By the way, there's some things that you can uh, cross out in notes. Because we did not, so we're going to draw these words right here. This is, why is that book called crappy? I think everything is here that needs to be crossed out. It is, I think I, 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 think I caught everything. You see that where it says E sodium? Okay, that line, action potential passes to zero towards E sodium, cross it out. Thus, E sodium is never reached, you can cross that out. Down here, there's a voltage gated potential. No, that's not it. No, don't cross that out. BM continuing, yeah, you can cross all that out. That's fine. Okay, there's a, there's a few lines that you can cross out. Why do we cross those out? Because we didn't talk about the Nernst equation. We didn't talk about equilibrium potentials. That's the page that we crossed out. All right? So there's a few things that you can cross out. Three lines in the notes. I, know it looks, I don't know why the hell it looks all crappy here like this. So let me do this. Oh, that, that, no, that fixed it. That's good. We don't give those PhDs this in, right? That line gone. That little bit gone. That gone. Okay, you don't have to know. Yes. Say that again. A magnet up to yourself? A magnet. Magnet. Like something you stick on your refrigerator magnet? Okay. I mean, the fluids of your body have, have, have charge in them, but is it going to affect the concentrations or the permeabilities? No. Copper fit doesn't work. You ever see those commercials where they have the copper fit that's wrapped around your joints and they say that it's therapeutic? Okay, good question, though. All right. Are we good? So let's take these words and let's draw a picture. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to draw the neuron again. We're going to take a little piece of the membrane and we're going to track membrane potential. So we're going to draw the neuron. So there's our axon, presynaptic terminal, dendrite cell body, the whole nine yards. I'm going to take this little piece of an axon right there and we're going to magnify it. All right? Oh. Uh, dynamics of the action potential? I have no idea what page this on. We're on the page where these words are. I don't know what page that is. Anybody want to help us out? 148, 147? I don't, I don't know. 146. We're on page 146. Probably about the last two thirds of the page, or the last half of the page. All right. I'm going to take that little piece of membrane and I'm going to stick it right there. That's what that is. All right. We're going to measure the membrane potential of that little teeny piece of membrane. What's that again? Resting membrane potential. We're going to say, we're going to call that number one. Okay, we're going to, we're going to, talk, we're going to in, in, in chronological order, talk about what happens here. So we're going to be sitting at rest. Then what we're going to do is we're going to stimulate. 
Okay, we're going to decrease potassium permeability, we're going to increase exercise of sodium, we're going to exercise of potassium, whatever. We're going to do something on pages 145 and 146 that causes a depolarization so that we move towards what? What do we need to hit? Threshold. All right, we're going to say that that's slow depolarization, we're going to say that that's two. All right, okay, we'll stop right there. We're going to come back. In that piece of membrane, we know that we have leak channels, right? How do we know we have leak channels? Because we have the rest of the membrane protection. We're not going to draw them in there, though. We've already done it. All right? We're not going to draw them in the leak channels, but we know that they're there. Correct? What we are going to draw in the membrane are the channels responsible for the action potential, and they're not leak channels. We're going to draw two channels. All right? Number one, or one of them, looks like this. Okay, that's the channel. Okay, when I draw them, when I drew these other channels, I just made, you know, like a little tube. And those are always open, at least as far as we're concerned. They're always open. These channels that we're going to draw are not that simple. They're much more complicated. Again, they're very specialized channels. They're going to have a couple, this one's going to have two doors. So, oh, and by the way, this will be the interstitial fluid out here. This is the outside of the cell. <laughs> This is obviously going to be the intron. Cellular fluid. Yes, a little piece of membrane from the axon. Okay? It has two doors. The outside door is slammed shut. The inside door is open. That has a name. That channel right there is a voltage gated sodium channel. It's not a leak channel. It couldn't be more different than a leak channel if we tried. All right, it's not a leak channel. It has a new name because it's a completely different type of protein. It is a voltage gated channel. Gate means open. How is that channel opened and closed? And actually more correctly, inactivated and activated. A change in membrane potential. It is gated by voltage, which is what membrane potential is. I'm gonna show you. Then we have another channel. That only has one door outside door. <laughs> All right? We will label that one as well. That channel is called also a voltage-gated channel, but it's not sodium. It is a voltage-gated potassium channel. So in neurons, in skeletal muscle cells, we have two channels that are responsible for the action potential. Voltage-gated sodium channels, voltage-gated potassium channels. That's what's responsible for the action potential. Okay? Are we good? That's at time one and two. So at one and time two, that's what those channels look like. They're shut, all right? We're gonna hit threshold though. The threshold, we're gonna say, is number three. So at time three, when we hit threshold, do we get an action potential? Right, do we not? Yes. We're gonna depolarize like crazy. We're going to say that that's four. That fast depolarization is four. Something obviously changed here. We just changed membrane potential. That means what? We changed the movement of what? Ions. What changes membrane potential? Ion movement. We just changed the permeability of sodium and potassium tremendously. What happens at time three and at time four is this. We're going to draw the membrane again. It's the same membrane, by the way. It's the same membrane. All right? This is what it looks like now. When you hit threshold, what's so magical about threshold? It pops those doors open. It pops the doors open. Now, sodium has a way to get in the cell, and it's not going to trickle in like it does to a leak channel. It's going to flood into the cell. When you have positive charge flooding into a cell, what should happen to membrane potential? As sodium comes into the cell, what should happen, what should happen to membrane potential? It should get more positive. That's why four is happening. Four happens because sodium comes flooding into the cell. How did that happen? We didn't change concentration. What did we do? We increased tremendously the permeability of sodium. You think the permeability of sodium is now 0.05? Yeah. 